Okay, so today, I'm gonna be showing you my nurse scrims against Oracle. These clips are from about, I think, two months ago now, maybe a month or two months ago. We were practicing just scrimming for a tournament where the map was Gas Haven. This was before Undying was banned on Spirit and Nurse. Just a little PSA for anybody that hasn't seen any tournament play before. Camping and tunneling, completely expected. I've seen a lot of people upset about me camping and tunneling, but every single killer in tournaments does this. I wouldn't be giving them good practice if I didn't play as optimal as possible to get kills and to try and win the game. So obviously, I'm gonna try and give them the best practice possible. Okay, so getting into the commentary of the game, we're about 30 seconds in here when I find Zeno on the back right hand side of the map. So we are taking chase with Zeno. He's kind of in a bit of a dead zone, so it's a good area to chase for me. We do end up getting the down relatively quickly. We're about 40 seconds into the game when we get our first down. It takes us to about 60 seconds to get him on the hook, but we do have a basement hook. Straight away, you can see in the middle of the map here, I have Shaq gen. I have a gen right next to Shaq, and there is one right next to the gas haven sign as well. There's also this one on the mid left that I'm pushing someone off of now, which is, means I'm in a very, very good situation because I have gens that are very easy to defend right next to my hook. That being said, they probably realized that as well, and they went for an early save just to try and get Zeno away. And straight away, as soon as I see that they've saved, I flick back, come back, and try and get Zeno down again. Zeno's trying to hide, obviously because he doesn't want to get found quickly. If he doesn't get found quickly, that would be a really good scenario for them, because they would have got away with an early save, and my first hook would have been relatively pointless. But... I do end up finding Zeno, he's not running DS, I don't slug him for it, so I put him straight back down and straight back down into the basement again. There you can see them using a repressed alliance on the gen, which was a new tournament meta when Ruin Undying was around, I'm not sure if it's still a thing, but it was being used back then. We do end up landing a pretty nice blink on J Train there, the Kate, and straight away I go back to my basement to try and defend it and try and force them to send as many people for the save as possible, and then hopefully contest the save and deny them the save and get Zeno dead as early as possible. Because right now we're in a situation where there are five gens left and I have someone who is on in stage two, about 20 seconds down in stage two, so I'm in a very, very good position. I also have a very tight three gen. The middle of the map is kind of dead, so I'm in a very, very good scenario, and I'm just trying to capitalize on that as much as possible. So I come back to the hill, and I'm just sort of sitting on top. I do end up letting two gens go in the sense of the one in the bottom left and the one across the map. But I'm completely fine with that. That I'm more than happy to take that trade because all I know is that I'm ticking down on the hook and I'm in a very, very good position. I already know that Xeno doesn't have DS because he would have already used it. And now if I can block this double save, I'm in a really good, really good scenario. Right now, I'm kind of just sort of waiting for them to commit to a save so I can try and go for the grab, but they do actually have a really nice body block in there from Nigel, meaning I have to blink over. Even when I do blink over, I don't actually end up getting a grab out of it, so it's whatever. Nigel body blocks me at the door of Shaq just to try and slow me from tunneling Xeno, but I just blink straight through the wall and carry on chasing him. We do have a fair few decent set of blinks in the middle, but Xeno's movement is really, really weird. This is one thing I noticed about Xeno. Very, very early on, like literally the first time I ever played him, is his movement is extremely unique. It's very, very weird to play against. Even when he is in the open, there is never a guaranteed blink that you're going to land on Xeno because his movement is just so abnormal and strange. But that is exactly how you want to play against Nurse. You want to deny as many blinks as possible, literally just from moving weirdly. But we do manage to get the hit in just before he throws the pallet down, and we throw him on a hook, having a death on three gents. So we're in a very, very good position. Straight after the hook, I'm trying to look and get as much pressure as possible. I do blink to the corner of the jungle gym after seeing Zongao's scratch marks, but he was beelining away, which was probably pretty smart of him, and I do elect to go back to my 3-gen and just defend my 3-gen. I do have a swing there, which I think should have connected on Nigel, but it is what it is. Just like you are going to get some hits which shouldn't hit, you're also going to get hits which should have hit, which don't hit. So. We do elect to carry on taking this chase with Nigel. He takes me towards the bottom left of the map, trying to take me away from the gen so that I can't have them aggressing with Ruin on dying. We managed to catch him on the double back and get a free tag. Straight away, I'm electing to go back to my gens because I know that that Shaq gen has good progress. And I'm just trying to deny it from getting popped because it's pretty vital in my three gen. This Shaq gas haven sign and one right next to shack is the three that i want to hold down because the distance between them is just so little there's just nothing between these gens at all and if i can get it down in the area then we're most likely going to see a basement hook 
which would also be really, really good for me because basement is very easy to defend. Just the natural setup of basement and how it's made up. The one way in, one way out, four hooks right next to each other just makes basement insanely strong because it means they have to go out that one way and they have to go in the one way. So if you as a killer stand on that area, then 100% if they're going for save, they have to come by you. So we do have a few nice little blinks on Nigel there in the middle of the map, which we are rewarded by by getting the down. And then straight away, I'm trying to capitalize. I see scratch marks in the gas haven and we start chasing a J train. Again, you can see what they're doing consistently is just running away from the active gens and trying to get as far away from the active gens as possible. In this scenario, it's like the bottom left hand side of the map. So that's where they've run pretty much every time. Nigel ran this way when I chased him. J Train ran this way when I chased him. Because all of my gens are bunched up on the right hand side of the map. I have four in a line on the right hand side. So every single time I take chase, they are beelining to the left hand side to try and make it as hard for me. <clears throat> to try and make it so that they can get those gens off on the other side of the map. But we do go to two slugs and the other person pops a gem. So now all I need to do is find them and we can end the game right there and there. And it would be over. And we would have the 4k and that would be an incredibly good result for me. A 4k with a one gen left. This was actually a pretty bad misplay from me here. Because I completely forgot that Deliverance was even in the game. So I like to hook the Neo because I'm thinking, well, if they're just hiding, then they're forced to come out this way because that person's going to die unless they get the save. And then we're just down to a 2v1 scenario, so it doesn't really bother me. But they do end up deliverancing because, of course, they're going to run Deliverance. Incredibly strong perk, especially when paired with DS. Extremely, extremely strong because that means that person can unhook themselves and then they literally cannot be touched for a minute. But... We do end up chasing Zongao and we do end up getting the down and we hook him on the right hand side of the map just getting more points for us in terms of the hooks and the hook states. So we're not in too bad of a situation but we're definitely not in as good of a spot as we were a few minutes ago. In fact with the other deliverance coming out on Zongao they're now more likely to make a comeback than they were two minutes ago. So a fundamental misplay from me hooking the deliverance and now we're in this spot where I have to technically win the game again or recover the game, pull the game back because they have two people right now that can't be touched. If I do down them, I can't pick them up because they will just de-strike me and they'll be back on their feet. And we have two people that managed to just take themselves off the hook. We get another swing there, which I feel like should have connected and even looks like it should have connected on my screen, but it doesn't for whatever reason. And then we carry on taking chase. Another swing, which literally right in their back doesn't connect, but it is what it is. That is Dead by Daylight sometimes. That just is the nature of dedicated servers. When people aren't playing on their own connection, of course, things aren't going to be consistent in terms of hitboxes and hitting. It just never will be in a game like this. So I come over to push at Shack Gen just to make sure my 3 Gen is still in check. And I'm looking around for a survivor because I think there is one in the area. We do see the scratch marks on the back side of Shack, And I do end up giving chase to it. So we're blinking across the Shack here just to try and get line of sight on the survivor. Moving around the Shack again. They're pathing from the jungle gym. They're hiding as much line of sight from me as possible. Which is exactly how you're meant to play against Nurse. And then they're doing the smart thing, taking the initiative. I'm running the outer edge of the map where there are trees, rocks, just things to make it as awkward as humanly possible for me to land that blink. And then when I do actually get a blink in the rough area, the dead hard comes out and just denies me that hit. So we do carry on chasing them and path through the jungle gym. I thought that I may have heard him there, but maybe a misplay from me. Probably shouldn't be blinking just off of audio cues alone. And then I go back to my 3 gen and just make sure it's regressing because that's what you can do with Ruin. You can leave, you can come back, you can leave, you can come back and you can just reset the gens. So we do get J Train down there again at the Kate and I go to take chase with Zong, the lorry, and we do end up getting a tag. So pretty happy with that. We're also in a good scenario once again. And then we get the down on Zong and we take the hook. Zongal now in stage two. And they did manage to pick up J Train, so they have two injured survivors roaming about. The hook that I have on Zongao 2 is kind of ridiculous. It's right in the middle of my 3 gen. We have the Shack gen or the gen right next to Shack. We have the one in main building, and we have the one right next to the sign or the hill. And we do see the other two survivors both injured, so I can literally just face camp this out, knowing that they won't get any pressure. They also know this too. So we call the game there a DC just to show that the game is over, which it absolutely was at this point, and we go on to the next game. I'm not going to show you too much from this game, because there were some pretty fundamental errors from me, as well as that 
Oracle played it extremely well. They had extremely good chases. They pumped the gens a whole lot faster. It just was a very difficult game for me to play because I felt like I could never get it into it from the start. But the first fundamental error is I had a very, very poor first chase. I was just swinging into the survivors back over and over. And that is definitely something that I should have been better on. Show you a speed up of that chase in the background now. And this I want to show you is my second fundamental error of the game. These two things combining just made it a really hard game for me to win. This was just very stupid for me. She's literally just tapping for the save, so I'm never ever going to get the grab there, and I still go for it for some reason. That was really poor for me, I never should have done that. And obviously with how long the game's gone, and the amount of chases that they had, Zeno playing extremely well, you know, just lasting in chase, they get an adrenaline off, and then all of a sudden I think I get like eight points from this game and they end up getting something around 18 so it was a very very poor game for me in the end even the end game here was very bad for me in a better case scenario i would have had no ed and i would have been able to hook somebody else because if i got someone who was a fresh hook i would have got five points and then that actually wouldn't have been too bad of a game because i would have got five points for the death on them four points for the two hooks on Zeno, and two points for a hook i think i got on zongao but that would have been you know, best case scenario, it was a pretty bad match for me overall, I didn't play the best, and Oracle just played extremely, extremely well, showing where they are probably the best team on Dead by Daylight at the moment, they've won three tournaments back to back, so I'm very, very happy to have this kind of result against them, but they played extremely, extremely well. Anyway, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, if you haven't already subscribed, if you could consider it, it would help me out more than you know, and I hope you have a great 2021.